Hi gang, Scott here. Welcome to Impost. Thanks for joining me. Today talking about black and white photos and using contrast to create depth, create layers, that play of light and shadow to make a rich, deep black and white photo. And this is a photo I shared in the In the Field video earlier this week. Struck a chord with a bunch of folks and so I thought I'd do a quick video to run down what were the steps, what were the pieces that came into play in post-processing to create that final image. So here is the image we're talking about. This is the finished product and decided to do a more cinematic type of crop on it. Uh, the things that work for me in this photo is the the layering, right? The the and I say layering, it's not like I'm not like stacking photos and blending them. I just mean the layers of of light and shadow in the photo. Like we have this area here in the foreground that's bright and then a bunch of dark land. We got some moderate midtones here, brightness in the sky, and then these really moody clouds which have a very dark underbelly. And a lot of those things got played up in post-processing to really make those differences in tone show through. So I thought I'd go back to the beginning here and start with this is like what it looked like basically in color and you know yes it's been you know done uh, there's some, some basic processing on it the auto button here I left the white balance as is it's got the Adobe landscape profile and a boost in texture clarity dehaze it was quite a hazy morning out there but the first big change was changing the profile uh, I'm a fan of very deep, contrasty black and whites. I like deep shadows. I like bright highlights. And one of the profiles that Adobe has that's really good is black and white 4. And that's what uh, our next snapshot will be. So that's really just the one change. So before and after. You can already see it's very punchy. Those shadows are very deep. The next little tweak is the black and white mix. Now this is a step many people will overlook. I'll show you one change there. Subtle one, right? Before and after. What happened? The sky got a little darker because darker tones tend to retreat from our eyes. So it's adding a little bit more depth there. Right? Just one more time. Before and after. Yeah, that sky kind of pushes back a little bit. And the black and white mix is in your B&W pane. This is normally HSL. If you're doing color work, it changes to black and white and you can adjust the mix. Uh, here I just used the, the color sampler, hovered over things, and as you notice as I move through the scene, different color tones will be highlighted in different areas. And so I did a little darkening of the land, which tended to be greens and yellows, and the sky, which tended to be these blues. And that ended up with this slight adjustment to the mix one more time before and after. So it's really starting to come together. From here, it was targeted adjustments, adjusting the sky, adjusting the land, the foreground, different pieces to really shape that contrast. So let's get that mix turned back on. Okay, there we go. And next was darken the sky. So this is straightforward, very simple gradient. There's the pin and you can see it's hovering over there. The green areas is what's being affected and it's a standard burn simple gradient just fading it all the way across there just to darken down that sky. The next one was some clarity. I mentioned I like punchy, you know, uh, pumped up black and whites. And so with the clarity, this involved a couple of radials. So we have one here and I have one here. So you can see both of these are doing a boost in clarity. So doing clarity, through this area of the foreground, and it's kind of creating a bit of a line just with crispness, uh, a subtle thing. You know, our eyes may subconsciously pick up on it. And then here, doing clarity, but targeted. Notice that the clarity is only being added to the shadow areas. That's courtesy of a range mask, a luminance range mask, targeting the shadow areas, right? So those two adjustments added more crispness and a bit of darkening as a result right before after you'll notice the darkening much more in the sky before and after because clarity is a, a form of micro contrast targeted contrast to smaller areas and when we push contrast we're pushing shadows deeper we're pushing highlights brighter the luminance range kept that to just the uh, the dark parts of the clouds one more time before 
and after. So it's like almost an additional amplification because we're not adjusting the midtones of the highlights. Then to the foreground, or sorry, the background. We get this background here. So watch the background area as I move to the next thing where I'm brightening the background. All right, that gets a little softer, a little airier, definitely a little brighter, and it's um, it's kind of counterintuitive to what I said earlier where darker tones and darker colors or cooler colors, they'll retreat into a scene. But in this case, because of this very powerful sky, I wanted a bright anchor back there, something to draw the eye in. And here you can see I've done both an exposure boost and that, uh, that glowy kind of softness to negative clarity, right? So something out in the distance like that, it may not have as much crispness. And for this type of photo, I want that mood. So before and after. Also notice the luminance range mask, right? This time it's limited to just the brighter tones. So kind of mid tones to highlights. So the shadow areas, this, uh, this ellipse, right? If I hover over this, you see it's right now, it looks like it's affecting everything. When I turn on the luminance mask, you'll see it's a little tighter. It's not going all the way out into these shadow areas. It's staying localized, and even as it gets up into the clouds, it's more nuanced. So the range mask gives us that. It's covering just the upper half here, so it's targeting the brighter tones. Now onto the foreground. Foreground, we got one more pop there. This is a subtle one, right? Here's, here's before, here's after. Little tiny bit of rays right here. And again, a straight kind of a dodge work here. The Dodge setting in Lightroom is about a 0.3 bump on exposure, so this is about half of that. And just a little touch, one more time leveraging luminance range masks so that the deep shadows are protected. Turn that on and notice those deep shadows in between all of these little highlights. Those are not being dodged. They're not getting that increase in exposure. And so turn that luminance range mask off before that change and after, little subtle things. And the last one's a vignette. And that's a pretty standard thing, although the vignette here is not done with the effects panel, it's done with a different radial. Very straightforward one, standard burn, and just shaping that. So I could bias the center of that vignette to the lower portion of the photo. Uh, vignette in the effects area, like over in here, if I did that here, it would just start coming in from the corners and coming in evenly, it would be dead center. I did not want that for this scene. I wanted it biased a little bit down. So in the end, that was the whole, uh, the whole summation here. So let's run through those things one more time. The basic color treatment, switching that into a black and white profile, and I'm a big fan of the black and white four profile for very contrasty, punchy types of black and whites. Visit the black and white mix. Make some adjustments to colors. Here the sky got a little bit deeper. Darkened the sky even further with a graduated filter. Added clarity to the sky. Added clarity to the foreground. And leveraged luminance range masks so I could target just the darker parts of the photo. In particular, the darker parts of that sky. Brighten the background and negative clarity to add a bit of softness and airiness. Creating that, you know, that, that difference, that delta between the dark foreground mountain and this bright background almost gives the, uh, the notion of, uh, you know, the, the promised land. There is, there is brighter days beyond these hills. A little touch of brightness to the foreground. One more time, adding more layering, right? Bright, then dark, then mid, then bright, then dark. We got that all the way through the photo. And finally, a vignette. So that's the sum up. And all those things came together to create a good story for this photo. You know, the, the, the balancing of light and shadow here, playing up those really dark, ominous tones. Yet out at the horizon, there is that warm, inviting glow. Even this is a black and white photo. That's an inviting area, brightness, uh, you know, hope on the horizon, now, that type of story with the image. Hope you found this uh, informational, educational, maybe even entertaining. And if you have any questions about it, go ahead and drop them below. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.